That sounds like a bigger cut. We better check it. Woo, look at that smoke go. Wow, there's a lot of tool pressure on that still. I don't want to mess this up. Sure taking me a while to get here. So I got one inch 310. I got to get it down to one inch 250. I'm going to check the inside of my cone pulley just so that I uh, don't make a stupid mistake. Yup, one inch 250. So we were at one inch 310. Boy, this tube is really hot. And we're at one inch three. Ooh, am I getting a taper? Wow. I'm one inch 319 here. Wait a minute, one inch 316. I can't have a taper. Actually, I could have a taper, but it ain't good. One inch, three fifteen. One inch, three fifteen. Okay, I'm gonna take uh, ten off a side, twenty thousand. Looks really rolling now. I think when I get done with this cut, I'm gonna let it cool. It's going to take me a while to get it down. I don't want to cut it while it's heated up and worked out of shape. I might regret that. You'll soon regret that, machinist. Woo, she's hot. 143 F. 130. 137. Hasn't been very long, maybe five minutes. 99. Caramel corn and transmission fluid smoke. More oil. Where there's oil, there's smoke. What do you think? I don't know what you're doing with it. Making a ream? Making a part my daddy used to make. Look at that. Look at that beautiful finish. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome considering the crappy material. Ooh. Oh, 1 inch 270. That's where I expected to be. Ow. Boy, that sucker is hot. 1 inch 271. 1 inch 2. 1 inch 270. I'm occasionally getting bigger measurements. I must be getting debris. 1 inch 271 and a half. 1 inch 269, 1 inch 270. I think I'm a little bit out of alignment. I'm a little bigger here, which means the tool post needs to come back this way. I must admit, this is one setting on this lathe that I have not bothered to check. And I've never adjusted this feature on a lathe before. Exactly how it came to me. I'm just going to move in about a thousand. This is going to take longer than it should take. But every time I take a cut, I've got less material to align my tailstock with. I'm anticipating that I'll still have a taper.
we will check it out and let you know. Well, I adjusted it again. Because I had evidently moved it a lot farther than I thought. I really didn't think I would have moved it at all. And my goal is to take a cut the whole length of it and measure it again. I was about 4,000 smaller down here than here. little deeper into the cut and our chips are getting bigger but of course we know this end is bigger than that end down there so this is a good sign we cut less down here so, and then we're cutting down here so I must have moved the moved this right and I want to tell you I just took the tiniest little bit of tension off of this screw and I put a lot of tension on the screw on this side I'm not even sure I saw it move these have uh, slot head adjusters in them that move the tail stock back and forth. I want to uh, replace those with Allen heads. I'm pretty sure my lathe is never going to end up in a museum as the perfect example of a certain year craftsman lathe. It doesn't need to stay stock. All that stuff is silly. You know, I don't really care whether somebody likes my lathe or not. I just want it to work good. So after this cut, we got one inch. Why am I getting different readings? I got debris under my calipers. That's why. Okay, we're getting one inch 265. Wow. One inch 264 and a half. I'm very happy with that. Five tenths. Let's say it's a thou. And we got a little bit of taper on this side. That's perfect. 65, so we got to get it down to a little under 250. So we can definitely take another, move the tool another 5 thou. Let's see, we're setting at about 12 and a half now. We'll come back to 12 and a half. And then we're going to go to 15. I'm sorry, 17 and a half. And this should just get us down to two inches, or one, yeah, one inch 255. Or thereabouts. I wonder if maybe I'm cutting a wee bit fast. Let's go to the next speed down. Notice as it was coasting down, the sound didn't go away at all. I want to do is change the frequency of it slightly. Well, it's in and out. Maybe it's a little better. Yeah, it's warm. The squeaking's not good. Fifty-seven. Two fifty-seven. See, we're sitting on about seventeen here. My finish has deteriorated slightly. You're seventeen. We'll go to 20. This should put me right about 250. 251. And my shaft over there is about 249. I think I need to make this a little smaller. Ooh. Measure my 
the shaft again. Okay, the shaft measures about 246 everywhere. Okay, I'm going to finish this up. I think we're safe. How's this going to become a ream, you ask? Hmm. It's a secret. Alright, I turned my tool bit and found my uh, surface again. I should have done that before I got down this low, just to give myself a uh, fresh surface to cut with. But it started getting ugly right in there. And I'd seen some signs on the last couple passes. I probably have one or two more passes. You can see it more of a cut now. There it comes. Yeah, it's just, maybe it's just the nature of this uh, black pipe. Hard to get a real pretty cut. We'll measure that right there. About 248. Not the last cut, but we're going to check here. Ooh, 47. It's about what our shaft measures. Let's double check this caliper. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, 48. Forty-nine. I think I need to take a wee bit more off. Let's take a dry pass. Remember, I had a a little different tool position here because I turned the bit around. It didn't feel about right here that it changes. I don't think we're getting anything on this drive path. Let's start there. We're starting to get a few little chips. I think we're just taking a few tents we're just wasting our time. Now we're getting a little bit of a cut. Well, machining things takes a long time, boys and girls. Let's see my, uh, I wonder if my center is loose. Looks like it's moving, but maybe it's just oil on it. Oh yeah, now we're getting a little more of a cut. We'll wait until it gets up in here somewhere and then we'll measure it. I think we're there letter finish then I think we can put the cutters on we're measuring about the same size that the shaft is 246 245 and a half 246 245 245 and a half Two forty six. Must have debris. No, well, maybe I am a little thick. No, two forty six. So the bearing has to have clearing for o clearance for oil. Moving my tool post out. <clears throat> so we have to machine something out of the bushing. How are we going to do that? Well, we've got to put cutters on our ream. And we can do that with knurling. I've never used this particular knurling tool. My father used to be a uh, very well-known Porsche race engine builder. And he did a lot of Porsche engine building. And those have two-part cases and he had alignment tools and line boring tools that he made out of long knurled shafts 
and he would turn the neural where he wanted to cut and then turn the neural down to the diameter he wanted to cut to. So what I would like to do is I'm going to raise up a neural here and then turn it down to uh, probably like a 149, something like that, if I can get it that big. And we're not going to put a neural on the whole shaft. We're going to use this as a, uh, as a lead. And probably... I'm a little confused about how much of the shaft I should neural. This is my tight bearing right here. This is my tight bearing. It would be nice to come through my good fitting bearing and have an alignment using it as alignment when we bore the tight bearing. Now the other advantage of, of boring a hole like this is it'll align two bores if they're not in alignment. Now I don't think I've got that problem here. But uh, <clears throat> nonetheless it will do that. Now let's see if I start the knurling here since we're not at the end of the gear we won't be able to get the cutter all the way through. Actually, that's about a quarter inch in, so we really could. I'm going to start the knurling right there. see what we're getting yeah I'm gonna slow this down I don't think I should be knurling that fast now a ream can take out a lot more material than this tool can take out but as long as our bores are close we should be able to use this to uh, take the squareness out of that bearing that I have I've got got a little bit of uh, double ovality in it oh didn't have my tool post tight. Let me check the diameter of it. Oh yeah, we're at 251. 252, that's good. So we're getting a raised area. There we go. Keep forgetting to leave that tool tight when I change it. About every project it seems like I do that at least once. So I brought it back to the beginning, snugged it up, and we're starting the feed again. I'm going to let this feed up to uh, probably about right here. And this will take a while. We'll be back. Look at that, 52. Here we got 46. Here we got 51, 52. A little over 52. 52. Now I gotta be careful. I need to take this down, and I can probably bring it back up by running the knurling tool over it again, but there's only so much material here to push up. I think the best move is to do this with the, with the cutting tool. I'm afraid if I touch it with a file, I'll take a giant unmeasured portion of my cutters away. Of the height of the cutter. There it is. I can hear the tool touching it. like this to be 48 or 49, 248, 249. Wow, there we are. 
We're at 249. I'm going to let it continue. Custom diameter ream. Oversize, undersize, whatever you're looking for. Yes, you can make it. And the larger the diameter, the easier this method is. I'm measuring 251, 250, 251. I think we got to take another cut. That sounds like a bigger cut. We better check it. No, 248, 249. My shaft measures like 246. I think I'm going to go just a little smaller. And if I get it a little too small, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of a lead on a cutter. Because then one section will take a little bit of cut, and the next section will take a little bit of cut. And I won't get the tool wedged or jammed in. Yeah, I'd say that's 248. So we're going to finish this cut. And then I think I'm going to take just a little bit more off of the lead here so we have a couple of steps in our cutter. Two forty nine. Gosh darn, I think I need to take just a little more. Yeah, that's probably forty eight. This is the part where we find out if I am machinist or mouse. I don't mind the lead in being a little undersized. That should fit. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, and I just felt it go into the next bearing. A little bit tight. I think I need to take some more off of this because my bore is a little too small yet. Here in the jets in the background for the Dayton Air Show. See, this I think is going to want to take a slight cut out of this bearing, which I don't really want. We're about an inch from the shaft coming through. Gotta be careful, I don't want to get my fingers wrapped up in this cloth paper in the shaft. Wow, I'm almost through there. What well, grabs more without lubricant? Yeah. Lubricant's a good idea. 
And yeah, the other end of the shaft is leading into the other bearing. <laughs> Got the shaft sticking out the other side over here. Look at that, boys and girls. I don't like my hands on the chuck side. Good and lubricated too. Look, you can see the copper in it. Let's rinse the swarf out. Bearing definitely has copper color. Shiny inside. I think we're getting there. Well, I haven't got a pass through on the cutter yet. I'm going to go try it on the shaft. So let's see. Look at that, boys and girls. Look at that fit. A little bit snug from this side. It doesn't go this way, it goes the other way. I think I'll take a little more material out of that with my cutter just to make more room for oil. Remember it runs this way. There's no C's. Runs right there. I'm going to take just a little bit more pass to make a little more room. <laughs> <laughs> 